Hello, friends. We here in today's video. We are diving into the world of flux space models, which have been making waves lately. You probably noticed there are a lot of them floating around. Some based on the Chanel version, others on the Dev version, and even some on the quantized GGUF version. It can get a bit overwhelming, right? Don't worry. I've got you covered. We are going to break them down and test four realistic style checkpoints together. And as always, you'll find all the download links in the description below. First, let's take a quick trip through the history of the Flux models. The Black Forest Lab, the creator of Flux, dropped the very first version of Flux on August the 1st. They split it into three variants, Pro, Dev, and Chanel. Now, here's how they stack up. The Pro version is top-notch in quality, but you can only use it through their API. No fine-tuning for the public. The Dev version is distilled from the Pro, so the quality isn't as high. However, it can be fine-tuned, but only for non-commercial use unless you get explicit permission from the Black Forest Lab. The Schnell version is the most open, with the Apache 2.0 license allowing for public use, but it's also the lowest in quality. When the Dev and the Chanel versions first came out, you had to download the whopping 23.6 GB files for each, without even including the VA or text encoder files. You also needed at least 16 GB of video memory to run them decently. Things improved when developer KJ introduced the FP8 version, which brought the file size down to just 11.9 GB by integrating the VA and text encoder. Plus, it worked on GPUs with as little as 8 gigabytes of memory. The quality dropped only slightly, so it quickly became the most popular version. Then came the GGUF version, optimized for systems with even lower video memory. It can run on just 6 gigabytes of VRAM, though the image quality takes a bigger hit compared to earlier versions. With that background, let's dive into the four checkpoints we'll be testing today. First up, we've got the FP8 version of Shutter 3 Diffusion, which came out several days ago. Its file size is 11.07 GB, and according to its creator, it's fine-tuned from the Chanel version of Flux. It claims to produce results similar to Flux Pro in just four steps, with a special refine mode that kicks in after 10 steps to add details without changing the composition. Sounds promising, right? Let's test it out by generating a couple of portraits. Here are the results after 30 steps of Shutter 3 Diffusion. Looking at the skin texture, FCXD 1.5 does a better job here, but this is just one aspect. We'll see how it handles semantics later. The model also has a mode where the composition stays fixed after 10 steps while details are refined. Let's check how that performs. Here are the outputs after 4 and 8 steps. Interestingly, the 4 step result actually looks better. But at 12 steps, the sweater starts blending into the face, creating some odd effects like flowers blooming on the fabric. At 20 and 40 steps, the flowers are gone, but the details haven't noticeably improved. The pearl necklace, which had errors at 4 steps, looks fine by 12 steps. But beyond that, there's no significant progress, except for slightly more natural-looking eyes. Next, let's break down the checkpoints we're comparing. I've organized them into a table to make things clear. The two checkpoints located in the upper half of the table stand out for their unique features. Shadow 3 Diffusion is based on the Chanel version, and its biggest perk is that it's commercially available. Meanwhile, Flux Realistic stands out as a quantized model, making it highly efficient for systems with lower video memory while requiring the least storage space. As for Pixel Wave and Spherical New Reality, they appear quite similar based on the details in the table, but don't worry, we'll explore their image generation performance in more detail shortly. Before jumping into the comparisons, let me quickly explain the workflow we'll be using. On the left, we've got some general settings, and on the right are the node groups for generating images with each model. For Flux Realistic, since it's a GGUF model, it needs specific loaders for UNET and a dual clip loader. Its text encoder is also quantized. For this test, all four checkpoints need to be placed in a UNET folder. For the first round of comparison, the LoRa node has been temporarily disabled. But don't worry, we'll circle back at the end of the video to see how this model performed when paired with LoRa. As for the settings, 
The guidance value in flux guidance is set to 2.5 for all four node groups. The samplers and the parameters are consistent across the four node groups. With 30 steps, the DPM++2M plus plus sampler and the SG uniform scheduler select. This way, we can keep the test fair and focus on how the models themselves perform. Now let's quickly go over some shared settings for these node groups. The V is the same for all models, and they are all using the same seed for consistency. The only exception is Flux Realistic, which uses a quantized version of Clip, while the other three models share this Clip. Alright, let's jump into comparing how these four models generate images. For this comparison, I'll focus on grouping Shadow 3 Diffusion and Flux Realistic together, as their image quality is generally lower than the other two models. On the other hand, Pixel Wave and Stelco New Reality deliver high quality results, with their outputs being fairly similar overall. Let's see how they stack up. Let's start by examining the skin texture and the facial details these models produce. Right off the bat, the quantized version of Flux Realistic performs significantly better than Shadow 3 Diffusion. If we zoom in on an image generated by Flux Realistic, the differences really stand out. The pupils are nicely rounded, the fine details like the eyelashes are well defined, and the skin texture looks really quite realistic. It's an impressive result, especially for a quantized model. Now comparing Pixel Wave and Stelco New Reality. Both outperform the original Flux models by Black Forest Lab. Pixel Wave generates richer details in the eyes, while Stelco New Reality adds freckles for a more natural touch. However, Stelco New Reality's skin sometimes looks a little oily, while Flux Realistic, despite being quantized, performs admirably giving its smaller size. Let's take a closer look at the set of portraits featuring elderly individuals. The results here are pretty striking. Shadow 3 Diffusion really struggles, producing faces that are, quite frankly, a mess. On the other hand, Flux Realistic delivers a decent result. This time though, Pixel Wave shines brightest. The hair texture it generates is incredibly lifelike, and the lighting on the face is evenly distributed without losing any details in the highlights. Still cool new reality, however, falls short in this round. It leans toward an oiled appearance, which takes away some of the realism. When compared directly to Flux Realistic, Stoical New Reality actually feels slightly less refined here. Let's move on to another set of portraits. Once again, Shadow 3 Diffusion misses the mark completely. It produces results with no real sense of realism. Meanwhile, Flux Realistic delivers better results, but the skin it generates looks noticeably oily. Pixel Wave clearly takes the lead here, producing the most natural and detailed skin texture. Stoical New Reality does a decent job too. There's still a slightly oiliness to the skin, but it's slightly better than Flux Realistic in this round. After reviewing these groups of portraits, I'd rank Pixel Wave as the top performer for skin texture, followed by Stoical New Reality. Flux Realistic comes in third, but considering it's a compact GGUF model with a file size of just 6.45 GB, its performance is still impressive for what it is. Now let's compare how well these models handle generating hands, a notoriously tricky area for AM models. Surprisingly, this time Shadow 3 Diffusion performs quite well, producing hands that look solid. Flux Realistic also does a good job, with no major issues in the hands it generates. Pixel Wave performs reasonably well too, maintaining its overall consistency. Interestingly, it's stoical new reality that stumbles in this round, with noticeable problems in the hands it generates. Let's look at a few more groups of images. After examining several more groups of images, it becomes clear that overall, all four models are fairly comparable in their ability to generate hands, with no one model standing far above the rest. Finally, let's evaluate the light, shadow, and artistic effect these models produce. Shadow 3 Diffusion falls short here. The lighting feels unnatural, awkwardly mixing candlelight with daylight in a way that doesn't make sense. Flux Realistic does a better job with its light and shadow balance, but it struggles with fine details, like the candlestick, where noticeable areas appear. 
Pixel Wave stands out with its unique artistic flair. It creates images that resemble classical oil paintings, giving them a timeless, painterly vibe, stoical new reality. On the other hand, leans toward a more modern aesthetic. Now let's check out another set of effects, this time imitating the dreaming bouquet of a lens baby lens. Flux Realistic delivers an impressive result here. However, Pixel Wave takes the top spot, producing the most visually stunning and refined outcome. In the next group of images, we explore the style of Polaroid cameras. Once again, Pixel Wave stands out as the best. Its ability to mimic the nostalgic Polaroid look is unmatched. Have you noticed how Pixel Wave feels like working with a highly skilled photographer? Its control over dynamic range is incredible. The highlights are beautifully managed. They're bright without blowing out any details, giving the images a natural and balanced feel. This level of precision really sets Pixel Wave apart. So which model is best? After comparing these models, I'd say Pixel Wave clearly stands out as the best overall. Flux realistic and stoical new reality deliver similar results, with stoical new reality being slightly ahead in some cases. However, let's not overlook the fact that Flux Realistic is a quantized model with a file size of only 6.45 GB, much smaller than the 11 GB plus sizes of the other models, which makes its performance even more impressive for its size. Now, if we put Pixel Wave and Stoical New Reality side by side, does Pixel Wave definitively take the crown? It seems so, but we haven't tested how these models perform when paired with LoRa yet. That's the next step and it might shake up the rankings. So let's find out. Next, I enabled the nodes for loading LoRa in the workflow to see how these models perform when paired with it. For this test, I used two LoRa's, one designed to accelerate image generation with a flux model, reducing it to just eight steps, and the other to apply a retro 1980s style aesthetic. Let's start by checking the effect on Pixel Wave. Here's what we observed. The image on the left shows Pixel Waves using only the Turbo LoRa for accelerated image generation, while the image on the right combines Turbo LoRa with the retro 1980s style LoRa. Surprisingly, both images are identical, meaning the retro style LoRa had no visible impact. In fact, even the Turbo LoRa didn't improve Pixel Wave's performance here. The faces in the images appear blurry and lack sharpness. On the other hand, Stoical New Reality handled the LoRa effects very well, producing clear and visually appearing results. Flux Realistic also performed impressively, showing strong compatibility with both LoRa's. After testing many images, here's my summary. If you have enough video memory, Pixel Wave and Stoical New Reality are the top choices. Pixel Wave delivers the best image quality overall, but struggles with LoRa compatibility. So if you plan to use LoRa, I'd recommend going with Stoical New Reality instead. That said, it's worth noting that Pixel Wave might work with specific LoRa's. It just needs more testing to conform. For those working with limited VRAM, the GGUF version of Flux Realistic is an excellent option. Its performance is not far behind stoical new reality and is incredibly efficient with its small file size. However, keep in mind that none of these models come with a commercial license. While Shadow 3 Diffusion can be used commercially for free, its quality is disappointing. If you need a model for commercial use, you might want to explore other models fine-tuned on a Flux Chanel base. That's it for my test. If you discovered anything new or interesting while using these models, feel free to share it in the comments. I'd love to hear your insights. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.